In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather in spirit to honour with Christian requiem John Kennedy Haldane, whose funeral mass this is today. It is all more difficult when we are unable to gather in person to express publicly and communally our affection and love for John. But to pray for him in spirit and in truth, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened. May our hope in the resurrection for your departed servant John also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be nourished by the word of God, listening to sacred scripture. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. If you believe with all your heart, you may be baptised. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, be ready to set out at noon along the road that goes from Jerusalem down to Gaza, the desert road. So he set off on his journey. Now it happened that an Ethiopian had been on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. He was a eunuch and an officer at the court of the Kandake, or Queen of Ethiopia, and was in fact her chief treasurer. He was now on his way home. And as he sat in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go up and meet that chariot. When Philip ran up, he heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and asked, do you understand what you are reading? How can I, he replied, unless I have someone to guide me. So he invited Philip to get in and sit by his side. Now the passage of scripture he was reading was this, like a sheep that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a lamb that is dumb in front of its shearers, like these who he never opens his mouth, he has been humiliated and has no one to defend him. Who will ever talk about his descendants since his life on earth has been cut short? The eunuch turned to Philip and said, Tell me, is the prophet referring to himself or someone else? Starting, therefore, with this text of scripture, Philip proceeded to explain the good news of Jesus to him. Further along the road they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is some water here. Is there anything to stop me being baptised? 
He ordered the chariot to stop. Then Philip and the eunuch both went down to the water, and Philip baptised him. But after they had come up out of the water again, Philip was taken away by the Spirit of the Lord, and the eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip found that he had reached Azotus, and continued his journey proclaiming the good news in every town as far as Caesarea. The Word of the Lord. It's my shirt. St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We shall stay with the Lord forever. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowd, No one can come to me unless he is drawn by the Father who sent me. 
and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God and to hear the teaching of the Father and learn from it is to come to me. Not that anybody has seen the Father except the one who comes from God. He has seen the Father. I tell you most solemnly, everybody who believes has eternal life. I'm the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert, and they are dead. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that a man may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was on the 20th of July, 1934, that John and Jane Haldane welcomed their third son into the world, John Kennedy Haldane, whose requiem we now celebrate, whose memory we now cherish, and whose future we place in the hands of Almighty God. It was to the family home in Willock Street in Mary Hill that they were first settled and then moving on to Niven Street just before the birth of his next two siblings, Ria and Stephen Ria sadly dying in infancy. Childhood memories for John's childhood are recalled by Fiona, who remembers his great love for Rupert the Bear. In fact, it was not unknown for John to be chased out of local newsagents as he would scour the pages of the Express to catch up in the, the latest adventures of Rupert prior to going to school. In fact, the recollection of John's best ever Christmas was when he, along with the customary chocolates and treats, received a Rupert the Bear album. That will be a thing that many folk of a different generation will remember that when we were not as financially comfortable as we are now and folk, you got a tangerine and a treat for Christmas or indeed an album as opposed to the plethora of gifts that so many young ones get nowadays but it was Rupert the Bear that was John's um, childhood hero he went to school at St Columba's in Mary Hill, and it was at sport and in sport that John excelled. In fact, for two consecutive years, he was the Scottish secondary school champion in both the long and triple jump. And that was something which the family were very proud of. He served his time as a joiner and also served his national service being enlisted in the HLI or the Highland Light Infantry. To do your national service often could see people posted to Africa, Hong Kong, Singapore or Cyprus. It was a source of amusement that John was stationed in Mary Hill Barracks and he could 
literally see inside the family home from the top floor of the barracks. You could look right into the family house. You know, didn't get to see the world. But John was able to look at that posting with some degree of humour. He continued throughout his profession in joinery where he was known very much as a perfectionist. He had very, very high standards and could often be working for five or six different firms in a week because if he was not happy with working conditions or the workmanship being carried out, he would simply walk off site. Such was his demands, but such was his recognised skill set, he could easily walk in to another job. He had a great love for sport, as I mentioned, and indeed, like so many people of a certain demographic and ethnicity, Glasgow Celtic was to be the team that he loved and followed, going to matches every, every home game with his dad and his brothers. There's other childhood memories which Fiona recalls which involve being up visiting the family relations up at Mavis Valley near Bishop Briggs, going on adventures in the canal which was strictly forbidden. But these are all simpler times which Fiona recalls with um, great affection. He settled eventually with the family in Everard Quadrant where he was to stay with the, for the rest of his life. And slowly as his parents passed and his brothers passed, he would be there, that would be his home. John never married, although I'm told that was not for want of some women thinking they'd be the ones to change him. But there was a certain streak of John that liked his own space, and liked to do his own time, and liked to do things in his time and his way. It was a very determined streak. But that was softened by a streak that I'm told that not many people saw a very gentle, very caring, compassionate streak. He loved animals and would often be moved to tears, even when reading of instances of animal cruelty. Fiona has great memories of him being a great and loving brother to her and an uncle to Mark, often telling her ghost stories, which apparently are were dependent, the quality was very much dependent on the hangover from the night before. Mark has many fond memories of his uncle, regaling stories of walking off sites or going out for day trips, and remembers with affection his big dictionary for crosswords and trademark bonnets. Although John's ability and craftsmanship didn't rub off and Mark and Mark remembers uh, John nearly losing the plot when Mark almost cut his toe off with a Stanley blade. But Mark's talents, I believe, are to be found in music where John was very proud of the accomplishments of his taking part in the, the brass band, the recording of which and the big band, recording of which Nessun Dorma we will hear during this recording is taken from that band in which uh, John was so readily proud of for Mark having. I mentioned it was an Everett Quadrant that John was to settle for most of his life and indeed in Everett Quadrant and at Everett Quadrant John was blessed with many good neighbours and Shona and the whole family would like to express their sincere thanks to those good neighbours, but also to Susan, Gillian, Betty, Laura and Karen and anyone else they forget, they want to offer a sincere thank you. And in particular to Fiona's good friend, Sheena, whom she describes as a wee Glasgow woman with a heart of gold. So we've got many things to be grateful for. John battled hard for 10 weeks after two consecutive operations to get himself fit and to recover and to return to his beloved, beloved Everett Quadrant. And it was not to be. Like so many people at this time, 
we're having to say goodbye in a manner and in a way which was almost inconceivable just two months ago. We're having to say goodbye to John in a very particular painful way. However, what distinguishes the Christian funeral from the secular is that while we remember and recall with affection the past, today is very much about the future because we believe for John life has changed, not ended. We have listened to the early accounts of the Acts of the Apostles, today's Liturgy of the Word, how the church began to grow. We listened to the second reading from St Paul, giving his comfort about what happens and what impact death has on our life, which is very little because of the victory of Christ. In the Gospel today, Christ says, whoever eats my bread will live forever. And John partook in the bread of life. John shared in Christ's baptism. By sharing in Christ's baptism, he shares in Christ's death. And Christ's death does not end in death, but leads to life. So we believe firmly that we shall see, through the mercy and love of God, the Almighty Father, we shall see John again. Until that time, John, rest in peace, eternal rest. Grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. With confidence in God, our Almighty Father, let us turn to the Lord, praying for our brother John, asking him to God to hear our petitions, to receive our prayers, and be attentive to them. For John, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. For John, who shared in the body of Christ, to sustain him on his journey through life, that he may find eternal rest in the presence of Christ. Lord, hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. For the family and friends of John, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all of us gathered here in spirit alone to worship in faith, although isolated from each other, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, graciously accept these prayers and petitions which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now prepare the gift for the Holy Eucharist.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice into your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favourably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant John may be taken up into glory with your Son. In his great mystery of love, we are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in the company of the choirs of angels we praise you, and with great joy we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and inspired by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on their sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this point during the Mass, we exchange a sign of Christ's peace. If you're watching and praying this video, 
then I invite you at home with someone else to invite you to exchange that sign of peace. If you're isolating or on your own, contemplate for a moment that peace which Christ offers. It's a peace the world cannot give. A peace which was promised to the repentant thief on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. It's a peace we hope to share and receive. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant, for whom we've celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In extending our heartfelt sympathies to John's family and friends, certainly Fiona and Mark, we are also asking God to sustain them at this difficult time, to sustain them in the knowledge that for those who have faith and trust in the Lord, the bright promise of immortality is there. And so it comes now for us to take John to his place of rest and committal, which is Glasgow Crematorium in Maryhill. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. Alleluia. I see. 